Yes, I do mean weirder than usual. It is once again time for the Grim Gazette. This is your weekly hit. Now I got it right that time. Your weekly hit of weird news, paranormal analysis, and other things that maybe you didn't care about until you came to this channel. <laughs> and I am T Morris. You can call me TT Monster or Twitch Dad. And every Tuesday, I bring you weird news on behalf. I can't see it. Oh, well. On behalf of OSI, Old Spirits Investigations. And you can find out more about us by going to oldspiritsinvestigations.com and then having a look at our YouTube. Because our YouTube is currently in its third season of Old Spirits. So we're going to uh, go ahead and kick off this uh, weird news with an actual follow-up. This is a different follow-up, an entirely new follow-up. And this was one that I thought was pretty freaking cool. After 101 years and a $20 find at a yard sale, Clara Bow's Lost Film premieres. How about that? How about that? So if you recall, we did cover this on a previous Grim Gazette. And if you go back and take a look at a previous Grim Gazette, so you'll find this, this article where this guy basically found at a yard sale a pretty decent copy of a silent film. And it had been lost. Everyone thought it had been lost forever. And here we go. Um, <clears throat> a century after she first began to turn heads, Clara Bow is it once more. The iconic flapper of the silent film era inspired Margot Robbie's character, Nellie, in Damon Chazelle's Hollywood epic, Babylon, is name-checked on Taylor Swift's forthcoming album, The Tortured Poets Department. And yesterday at the San Francisco Silent Film Festival, one of her earliest films was shown for the first time since the days of Bathtub Gin. The story of the film's discovery has already caused excitement online. Filmmaker Gary Huggins inadvertently snapped up a slice of lost silent film history at an auction in a car park in Omaha, Nebraska that was selling old stock from a distribution company called Modern Sound Pictures. Hoping to bid on a copy of the 1926 comedy Eve's Leaves, that he had spotted on top of a pile, Huggins was informed that he could only buy the whole palette of movies, not the individual cans. The upside, the lot was his for only 20 bucks. Huggins soon discovered that his new pile of reels included 1923's The Pill Pounder, a silent comedy that had been thought to be lost for decades. It is a short two-reel film shot on Long Island, New York and directed by Gregory LaCava, best known for later classics such as My Man Godfrey, 1936, and Stage Door, 1937. The film star stars rubber-faced vaudeville veteran Charlie Murray, the so-called Irish comedian who actually from Laurel, Indi who is actually from Laurel, Indiana. He plays a hapless pharmacist, the pill pounder of the title, who is trying to host a clandestine poker game in the back room of his drugstore. What few realized until Huggins watched the film was that it also features 17-year-old Bo in a supporting role. She plays the girlfriend of Murray's son, played by James Turfler, who had already appeared with Bo in her second film, Down to the Sea in Ships, directed by Elmer Clifton and screened in 1922. Turfler's character is the butt of some bizarre gags. At one point, he chugs, uh, he chugs a jug of effervescent FOMO seltzer, and Bo watches in horror as he floats up to the ceiling. <laughs> uh, you know the sale the seller was pissed after this. Oh, you know he was. He must have been livid. He was like, get this out of my hair. Get this out of my hair for 20 bucks. And and he had these gems in there. In this, one of her earliest surviving performances on film, Bo looks even younger than her years, although she lacks the sleek Hollywood glamour she later acquired. She has the charisma to turn a thankless bit part into something of a scene stealer. The critics took note based on the evidence of this film. The exhibitor's trade review described her as perhaps the most promising of the younger actresses. In his introduction at the film in San Francisco's Grand Palace of Fine Arts Theater, Bo's biographer, the screenwriter David Sten, 
speculated that the actor may have forgotten that she made the film, as she never talked about it. It was made during a traumatic period in her life, only a few weeks after her mother's death, following prolonged mental illness. He invited us to imagine how Bo might have felt appearing in a lighthearted slapstick comedy in such circumstances. The film, which has been restored by the festival's organizers and was screened with accompanying music from composer Wayne Barker, now looks remarkably good for its age. The festival's senior film restorer, Kathy Rosa Reagan, said it was in great shape when they received it. She added, we imagined it was screened maybe a few times, but there's hardly any damage. A few scratches here and there, some dirt, but overall in pretty stellar condition. Lots of Clara Bow's films have been lost. I believe it. I believe it, baby. I believe it. Now it has been freshened up and looks its best, but is still incomplete, being in what Stern, Stin called a beta version. That's because the copy Huggins found was not only from the 1920s, but a 35 millimeter print from the 1950s or 1960s of an edit of the film that was destined to become part of a 16 millimeter compilation of old silent films with a comic voiceover poking fun at its archaic aspects. The intertitles have been removed, and there are a few scenes and shots missing, too. This process is deeply unflattering to old movies, but it has been responsible for preserving versions of silent films that would otherwise have been lost, including a Lois Webber melodrama, Shoes, from 1916. And the lack of titles... You don't want a hug? No hugs. <laughs> and the lack of titles are no barrier to following the film. For me, it was a, it's a pretty perfect 14 minutes of fun, said a Reagan. It'd be nice to know what the titles were, but you can certainly get the gist without them. That's Bo. So that's a shot of uh, Bo with her pet koala, 1931. Beautiful woman. Sten calls the tale of the film's discovery miraculous and led a round of applause for Huggins, who was in the audience. He explained that there was reason to believe that some of the discarded material was among the other cans that were sold at the Omaha auction. The hunt is on to round out the pill pounder, and several people have joined in the search, combing through thousands of reels. One Omaha-based filmmaker and silent film enthusiast, Alexander Payne, was quick to offer his support. The film fills in a brief blank period in Bo's filmography. She shot the role, probably in just a couple of days, in the early false start phase of her film career. Bo, a tomboy from a troubled home in Brooklyn, made her debut after winning a magazine talent competition in 1921, but struggled to get her career off the ground. I wrote myself out going from studio to studio, from agency to agency, applying for every possible part, she later recalled. But there was always something. I was too young or too little or too fat. Usually I was too fat. In 1923, she found her way into a handful of films, including The Pill Pounder, where she had the chance to shine in supporting roles. And this is when she finally got her ticket to Hollywood and Paramount. She's not only a star of film, but you can't take her eyes off her, says O'Regan. For a few minutes, she's there. She's divine. She's fun. She's full of energy. The festival screened The Pill Pounder alongside another new restoration, the feature film Dancing Mothers, directed by Herbert Brennan in 1926, a flapper drama that Bo made for Paramount in one of her last supporting roles. She plays the reckless daughter of a lonely woman, Alice Joyce, who tires of staying home while her husband and daughter party hard in New York and step out to go nightclubbing. Bo completely pulls focus from the grown-ups around her, playing a hedonistic minx whose body spasms with pleasure when she sips a cocktail. Sten described the later film as like watching a star being born. Finally, Bo was able to make good on her early promise and start a career as a leading lady. With the breakout comedy It, not to be confused with the one about the clown, Directed by Clarence Badger in 1927, she became a genuine star for, for, for the ages. It's easy to look back and assume Bo was destined to become a sensation, but her overnight stardom took a good five years of hard work. The Pill Pounder offers a fascinating glimpse into the route that she took to get there. So yeah, um, one of the things about, about me you'll find is that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of film. I'm a fan of film, and we actually covered this in a in an earlier, like I said, we we covered this in an earlier Grim Gazette. So it's kind of cool to have these follow ups, just just so we can say, hey, this this is what happened afterwards. Um, sadly, a lot of films back then we lost due to them not storing them correctly or them purposely destroying them. Exactly, exactly. They were also very flammable, so, uh, because the um, the film was usually put on nitrate, and and that stuff is super flammable. 
And if a studio burned down or something like that, the first thing that was lost was film. Matter of fact, I know that if you go back and look at Metropolis, when they tried to when they tried to to, to re, re, rebuild Metropolis, uh, they found out things like, oh yeah, some of these title cards were animated, and there were all these really cool things about about the film. They still do not have an idea of what the score was when they played because it would it would change from from uh, from theater to theater. I give a talk. I can't give it a TwitchCon, sadly, but I give a talk about the evolution of the, the, the film soundtrack. And one of the things I found out in my own research, because I did my own research, I, I found out that you could go from one theater to another theater to another theater, and each theater had a different soundtrack, which I thought was really interesting. I found that really fascinating. All right. So our next story. Yeah, Baltimore area teacher is accused of using AI to make his boss appear racist. How about that? Yeah, yeah. In, in uh, making impressions on young minds. Here we go. Here we go. A Maryland high school athletic director is facing criminal charges after police said he used artificial intelligence to duplicate the voice of Pikesville high school principal Eric Icewert leading the community to believe Icewart said racist and anti-Semitic things about teachers and students. We now have conclusive evidence that the recording was not authentic. Baltimore County Police Chief Robert McLeod told reporters during a news conference on Thursday, it's been determined the recording was generated through the use of artificial intelligence technology. Dazon Darin, 31, was arrested Thursday on charges of stalking, theft, disruption of school operations, and retaliation against a witness after a month-long investigation from the Baltimore County Police Department. Attempts to contact Darian or Icewert for comment were not successful. The wild headline making details of this case aside, it emphasizes the serious potential for criminal misuse of artificial intelligence that experts have been warning about for some time. Listen up, AI bros, please said Henry Farad, Hanny Farad, said Hanny Farad, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, who specializes in digital forensics. Farid said he had helped analyze the recording for police. Baltimore County Police also consulted with another analyst and experts at the FBI. Their conclusion was that the recording was suspicious and unlikely to be authentic. For just a few dollars, anyone can harness artificial intelligence to make audio and visual deepfakes. Stakes are high, but deepfake detection software doesn't always get it right. <laughs> this Baltimore area case is not a canary in the coal mine. I think the canary has been dead for quite a while, Farron said. What's so particularly poignant here is that this is a Baltimore school principal. This is not Taylor Swift. It's not Joe Biden. It's not Elon Musk. It's just some guy trying to get through his day, he said. It shows you the vulnerability, how anyone can create this stuff and they can weaponize it against anybody. All right, so real quick, I know I was talking about weird news, but this is also technology news. And this is something that is of interest to me. I, I'm a huge fan and a huge proponent of artificial intelligence. I don't think AI is out to get us. I do think there's a lot of responsibility that comes with AI. And a lot of these tech bros aren't talking about it. A lot of the AI bros that are pushing art and going, look at what they made. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it, it's sus, and it sucks. Great Scott, subbing at tier one. Thank you very much, I do appreciate that. Half a year already, how about that? Shovel. <laughs> Shovel. Um, no, I do. I, I don't have a problem with AI. And I, I don't consider myself a Luddite. I, I actually, I, I do. I went through the training. I got the certification. I'm all for AI. I don't have a problem with it at all. But what I have a problem with is when people are irresponsible with technology. Hey, yo, how you doing there? Good to see you, Styles. We're going to get into debunking in a bit, so hang tight. <laughs> um, I, I, I do. I take a lot of, I take a lot of serious 
serious um, lessons and inspiration from stories like this because I really think if you really want to market yourself in AI, you basically say that my my main talent is ethical AI. I'm a and I I do I believe you can be ethical with AI. You just have to make sure that everybody around you is on board with it as well. So let's get back to the story. Uh, Darian allegedly sought to retaliate against his boss. Darian's alleged scheme began in January in an attempt to retaliate against Icewort. Investigators wrote in their charging documents provided to NBR. The two men were at odds with each other over Darian's work performance challenges, police wrote. Icewort launched an investigation of Darian in December 2023 over the potential mishandling of, woof, a little over $1,900 in school funds. The money was paid to a person hired as an assistant girls soccer coach, but the person never did the job, according to police. Further, Icewort had reprimanded Darian for firing a coach without his approval. Icewort had told Darian that his contract was possibly not being renewed next semester, according to an arrest warrant. On January 17th, detectives found out about the voice recording purporting to be of Icewort was spreading on social media. The recording, which can still be found online, allegedly caught Icewort saying disparaging comments. The audio clip, the catalyst of this investigation, had profound repercussions, the charging documents read. It not only led to Icewort's temporary removal from the school, but also triggered a wave of hate-filled messages on social media and numerous calls to the school. The recording also caused significant disruptions for the PHS staff and students. Students were inundated with threatening messages, and Billy Burke, head of the union that represents Icework, said the principal's family was being harassed and threatened, according to reporting from the Baltimore Banner. Icework told police from the start of the investigation that he believed the recording was fake. Darian was taken into custody Thursday morning at Baltimore Washington International Thurgood Marshall Airport after attempting to board a flight to Houston, Chief McClough said. Security stopped Darian over a gun he packed in his bags and when officers ran his name in a search when he found he had a warrant out for his arrest McClough said Darian was released on a $5,000 unsecured bond his trial date is for June 11th where are our regulators after following this story Farid is left with the question what is going to be the consequence of this that's a great question to ask um I mean it's not a, it's not a far jump from Houston to Mexico so um let's see here uh Fared has been studying digital manipulation for more than two decades 20 years and the problems he has the problems have only gotten much bigger and the consequences more severe I swear it has been on leave since the audio recordings went public Pikesville High School has been run by district staff since I swear it left and the plan remains to keep those temporary administrators on the job through the end of the school year, says Miriam Rogers, the superintendent of Baltimore County Public Schools. As for Darien, Rogers said, we are taking appropriate action regarding the arrested employee's conduct up to and including a recommendation for termination. I would hope. I would hope. Baltimore County Executive John Ozalski uh, said, and if I butchered that, I apologize, uh, said during Thursday's press conference that this case highlights the need to make some adaptations to bring the law up to date with the technology that was being used. Farid said there remains generally a lackluster response from regulators. Also put in there senators, also put in there representatives, also put in there state representatives. Reluctant to put checks and balances on tech companies that develop these tools or to establish laws that properly punish wrongdoers and protect people. I don't understand at what point we're going to wake up as a country and say, like, why are we allowing this? Where are our regulators? And that's the thing. You know, there are some, there are some senators that actually chuckle and go, yeah, I don't understand a damn thing about this. It is not hard to wrap your brain around. It is not hard to wrap your brain around this stuff. And once you do wrap your brain around this stuff, you go, huh, we need to change some things. Um, I just like the word idiot. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, a, it, it's, it's an awful word, but you know what? Some, some senators, some representatives, they wear that like a cloak of honor. And I'm like, it's, it's not, it's not, this is, this is not something you should be proud of. 
you should be trying to figure out, okay, brass tacks, tell me how this stuff works and make sure technophobia may play a part in them not becoming literate about it. That's very true. That is very, very true there, Iswu. Um, I had a boss who loved to push AI to people, but had absolute, like, night terrors over it. And that's, that's the thing about artificial intelligence. It is like any kind of technology. And if you don't stay ahead of it, if you don't stay ahead of it, you, you, it, you know, I mean, and this is where I get uptight with the AI bros and the tech bros. Because a lot of times, one of the things I noticed when I was taking my training was the people that were giving it were all listed, they all listed themselves as social media entrepreneurs. Whatever that means. You know, uh, just um, again, I'm playing that. Um, yeah, social media entrepreneurs, which means you've never held a freaking job in your life. And here's the other thing, though, about about these social media entrepreneurs. They were once upon a time pushing social media. Now they're pushing AI because it's the hot topic, because it's the it's the buzzword. Everybody wants in on it. And uh, good luck, AI trying to make me racist, Arnie. <laughs> hey, Marv. How are you, buddy? It's great to see you, man. <laughs> Guardian down. Uh, <laughs> um, let's use a social media entrepreneur, Poggies. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here, here's my spin on it. it. The thing was was that was that because we had social media entrepreneurs pushing social media without really talking about what they were doing with it. Especially from a, um, uh, from a, uh, a, a simple, you know, cybersecurity aspect of it. We had Cambridge Analytica happen. So you really do have to be careful when it comes to this kind of technology. And, um, soon they'll integrate AI into games. I think it's already happened. I think it already happened. And it got very mixed results. Uh, Pe Pal World, Paleo World. It was I, I can't remember what it was called, but it was it was the it was called the um, uh, the Pokemon knockoff. And uh, Cambridge Analytica can f themselves. We got Brexit because of the yeah, exactly, exactly. And and you know, it's like any kind of technology. There's a lot of incredible things you can do with AI. But I will always be the guy in the corner asking the question, hey, have we really thought this out? A great example, and I know I said it, I think, in the last one, during my training, one of the things were like, well, AI is going to free you up from menial tasks and allows you to do more creative and uh, uh, more complicated tasks in the workplace. And I'm, and I'm the one saying, like, what? Now, this one, I, I hope we have a follow-up story. I haven't seen any follow-up stories on this. So if, uh, if uh, Marv, you can find out anything about this, I would like to know this, the, the status of this horse. Uh, British Army says horses that bolted and ran loose in central London continue to be cared for. Sandwich Dad, thank you for the follow. -up. And if you haven't seen this video, we're, we're going to watch it right freaking now. This is some chilling stuff. It's, they're loading an ad. We're anesthesiologists. I'll just wait for this. All right, here we go. That's not paint. That's not paint on the on the horses either. Just gonna back that up again. That's not paint. Um, I think the the horse the horses. Uh, well, I mean the, the story is gonna go into it, but that horse got um, something spooked them. I haven't heard much with follow up. Something spooked them, and they uh, bucked their riders and ran. Yeah. Yeah. So let's read the story. Uh, the military horses that bolted and ran loose when spooked by construction noise in central London earlier this week continue to be cared for and closely observed, the British Army said Friday. In an update on X, formerly Twitter, the Army gave no fresh information on the condition of the two horses, Vita and Quaker, that were operated on. Trojan and Tennyson were the other two who broke loose. Vita, a white horse seen drenched in blood as it galloped down Aldwych in between London's historical financial center and the busy West End Theater District, and I do know where those are, um, was the most visibly injured, was treated for lacerations. Quaker, the other horse to be operated on, was transferred to an equine hospital for specialist care. 
four horses from the household cavalry, the ceremonial guard of the monarch and a feature of the state functions in London broke free during routine exercises in the morning rush hour on Wednesday near Buckingham Palace. A fifth horse tried to bolt but couldn't break free. Every one of the horses involved continued to be cared for and closely observed, the army said. All our horses received the highest standards of care, and those that did not undergo surgery are expected to return to duty in due course. All the horses were recovered and returned to the camp. Okay. Uh, 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 all right. Good to know. Good to know, Scott. Thank you. Thank you for that follow-up. Yeah, that was that that is a that is one freaky video. Let's see if I can just. I mean that's like that's like apocalyptic stuff right there. That's that's crazy. That is crazy. It's like something straight out of The Last of Us, you know? I mean This is great. Anyone want a hug? But it's nice to no. know if they can if they can't return to service, they'll be sent out to stud so they can be living the dream. Amen. Amen. Uh, they said three. Um, hang on. I think they said uh, four of them broke free. Yeah, four. A fifth horse tried to bolt, uh, couldn't break free, but four of them, uh, four of them bolt, four of them bolted. Oh, well, that was the thing. A lot of people were calling it, you know, somewhat prophetic, and they were they were mentioning the four horsemen and things like that. So yeah, yeah, uh, that's wild. That's wild. So good news about the horses. They're doing good. Now, moving on. Ron Gittens. Flat secretly turned into Fantasy World by Tenant gets special status. Ron Gittens, who died in 2019, only ever allowed a few people into his extraordinarily decorated Merseyside home. Merseyside home? Merseyside home. Where he lived for more than 30 years. And this is what this guy's place looked like. Can I get rid of this banner? Google, if you please. Jeez. There we go. So this is this guy's apartment. A renovated, oh, sorry, not a renovated. Let's try that again. <clears throat> a rented flat secretly converted into a fantasy world by its tenant has been given grade two listed status after volunteers campaign to save it. The ground floor apartment of this semi-detached house in Oxton, Merseyside, was decorated by artist Ron Gittens, who lived there for more than 30 years. He crafted fireplaces in the shape of a lion and a minotaur, fashioned a Roman altar in the kitchen, and painted the walls with floor-to-ceiling Egyptian, Greek, and maritime theme murals. Mr. Gittens only allowed a handful of people inside the home, when his niece, Jan Williams, visited after his death in 2019, she made saving the flat, which had become known as Ron's place, her mission. Someone ain't getting their security deposit back. No. But look at that. Look at that. Um, now, unfortunately, this bathroom doesn't do it for me because take a look at the tub. You ain't getting in that thing. But look at that fireplace. That fireplace is actually pretty boss. It's like the fireplace of a of a of a D and D overlord or something like that. You know what I mean? All right. She said he had created his own fantasy world in a rented flat. You hear of people whose landlords won't return the deposits because they left a blue tack mark on the wall, and he had created a whole Minotaur fireplace. Now, Mister Gittin's work has become the first example of outsider art, a term used for work done by those without conventional training, to be granted grade two listing by the Department for Culture, Media, and Sport, DCMS, following the advice of Historic England. Among those who have supported efforts to save a flat is rock star Jarvis Cocker. Uh, the former pulp frontman said, a small number of people on this planet have known for a while that Ron's Place is a very special place, but from now on it's official. Ron's Place has been given listed status. The work of one unique gentleman in the north of England has been recognized nationally, globally even. Hallelujah. Okay, some of this stuff is pretty, pretty freaking cool. <laughs> wow. 
Ms. Williams originally said she and fellow volunteers applied to have the property listed to ward off evil and put off property developers. But a donation last year meant the group they formed, the We're All Arts and Cultural Community Land Trust, was able to buy the home at auction and now hopes to use it to inspire other artists. Or other artists. And now hope to use it to inspire other artists. Ms. Williams, who, like her late uncle, is an artist, said, we have always had the idea of a holistic house of art. I'm sure that's what Ron would have wanted, and having the listing gives us a lot more credibility. She believes Mr. Gittins, who died at age 79, would be over the moon with his decision. She added, he was really proud of it. It's sad because when I was going through his stuff, I found a postcard he'd written to me saying, I can't wait to show you what I've done. <clears throat> He'd written the wrong address, so it had returned to him. I never saw it, but that kind of validates, but that kind of, but that, oh. I wish this thing would stop shifting. Freaking ads. <laughs> um, he'd written the wrong address, so it was returned to him, and I never saw it, but that kind of validates me, and I think he's been made up at the lengths we've gone to. I mean, look at this. That's amazing. This is a guy who truly loved art. He just loved art. Sarah Charlesworth listing team leader north at historic england said ron's place is a testament to the unique artistic achievements and vision of ron gittens over four decades the extent to which ron's creations have inspired action from people in the local area to raise funds to purchase the building and secure the survival of his legacy demonstrates the value of this remarkable project and why it has earned its place on the national heritage list for england <clears throat> and everyone that should wrap up the weird and interesting news segment of the Grim Gazette. Now we're about to get into the paranormal, and let's take a look at this video, shall we? Here we go. This man was walking back from fishing when he captured this on video. Yo, what the? nobody in here. Yo! <laughs> okay. This man... I'm about to debunk this in a red-hot second. So, for those of you who just uh, followed, uh, Numu, uh, Welcome for that. He seems weirdly elated because of the with this possible uh, paranormal experience he's had. But I have one glaring issue about this. <clears throat> so let's 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 debunk this video, shall we? And was walking back okay. from fishing when he captured this on video. We have confirmed this is the same guy. We have confirmed this is the same guy. But here we go. <clears throat> All right. What the Okay, first let's back this up. I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, okay, so he's going into the men's room. All right. He's going to the men's room. So that, that's pretty clear. He's going to the men's room. And he does, and he hears, he hears somebody screaming, somebody help me. He goes in here. And at no time does he announce his presence. If you ever want, if you ever want to 
disarm a situation like this, all you got to do is come in and raise your voice. Nine times out of ten, if there is something bad going down, you're going to raise, you, you, you know, somebody coming in and raising their voice, that disarms it. Because then the jig is up. If it's a group of people, that could be a little hair, that could be a little hair raising. But if you come in, if someone is doing something fishy, pardon the pun, someone's doing something fishy in a, in a, in a men's bathroom, they don't know if the person raising their voice has a, has a group of other people outside. This guy just waltzes right in. He just waltzes right in without it, without, without it, without a care. <clears throat> Now, I don't think he has doctored his voice, but I really do believe that he has oh. brought, I believe he has dropped in someone else's voice here. I really believe that. Because in here. he came in there completely unannounced. And he's filming it. And he's no. filming it. <laughs> and he's filming it. So... For the uh, for the individual that uh, has picked up, um, oh God, here we go. Always the thing that I hate doing. This man was walking. Yeah, this isn't even the original video. This was just an intro to it, and this and th this is again one of those repurposing of, of of other people's content, probably without his uh, with his permission. Has gotten one hundred and two thousand likes. Uh, 11,000 favorited, and it's been shared nearly 10,000 times. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. So this is Holly Weird Paranormal, and I am a huge fan of hers. I absolutely adore the stuff she does, and I am particularly excited because she's going to be, not necessarily a guest, but just a, she's going to be attending Penhurst Paracon. So I'm, I am, uh, I've, I've already talked to her. We are going to uh, have dinner, you know, OSI and her, and it's, it's got, I'm, I'm just so excited about this, but she actually brought this up and I wanted to make sure that we covered this. Cause I remember hearing something about, about this story, but hearing it from uh Holly weird paranormal, that's just, that's just icing on the cake. So here we go. This is a sad story to read, but this is certainly an example of why you need to be very aware of who you're ghost hunting with and why you need to be very, very vigilant. Yep. As of late of this weekend, the body of a 22-year-old French woman has been found in an abandoned Italian church that was rumored to be haunted. Now, according to news reports, she was searching for ghosts for an alleged competition that has been popularized throughout France on the TikTok app. And upon further research, she was going to do this ghost hunt in an abandoned Italian church in the Iosa Valley. Now, it was in the matter of how her body was found that it had led investigators to believe that this was either due to the stunt, a stunt that was carried out horribly wrong, and or it was probably consensual, unaliving, or sacrifice. According to the medical examiner, it appeared that the 22-year-old French woman's body had been completely drained of blood. She had been shot Yikes. once in the neck and abdomen and stabbed several times with a camping knife. Yikes. Unfortunately, other witnesses had noticed her and another person, a young gentleman in his 20s who appeared to have dark hair and olive skin entering into the abandoned church together. The two had been traveling in a burgundy colored van which has been seen and surveillance on local cameras, but further investigation is still in effect. And we've said this time and time again on this platform in our paranormal community that if you're going to go <clears throat> hunt, that you do that with people that you know yeah. into places that you have permission to go and investigate. So you know that not only are you safe with the people that you're investigating with, but you're also safe in those places. And we've also seen this occur time and time again with these popular TikTok competitions and stunts that can go horribly wrong in every sense of the word. This is truly such a sad story and I hope that they really find the perpetrator behind all this and that the family of this young woman gets some sort of justice and many condolences. Okay, so a little bit to unpack here. And uh, actually, King, you were very close. About two weeks ago, we talked about, uh, we, we, we talked about ghost hunting gone wrong. And, and this, 
I've been wanting to talk about this story for a while, but I, I lost track of the clip, and I also wanted to make sure we featured uh, Holly Weird Paranormal. Do yourself a favor, if you if you are keeping track of anything on TikTok that's paranormal TikTok or paranormal-related, follow, follow her. Follow Par uh, Holly Weird Paranormal. She is amazing. I, I love everything she does, even when she does stuff that's non-paranormal. I mean, if you remember that 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 gang gang, what a cowboy trend she did a parody of it and it was absolutely astounding she's 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 awesome but getting back to this so first off uh you also remember it was if it i think it was two if it wasn't two weeks ago it was last week i played the uh horror movie trailer grave encounters unfortunately this is sort of a direction that that that, that is going on in the paranormal in that we're going to do a wild dare kind of uh, realistic reality television sort of setting. I know of uh, a couple of ghost hunting teams that are doing a reality show where everybody is in uh, like a house and then one by one other paranormal and participating teams are being eliminated and the last team standing, I guess, wins the prize, whatever that may be. In this case, it's about a TikTok stunt or a TikTok competition. And this lady teamed up with somebody she thought she knew, and they were doing some ghost hunting and things went awry. Everything that Hollywood Paranormal is saying here is true. Um, you want to make sure that when you go out doing paranormal investigation, that you go with a team. Going alone, the only thing going alone, the only thing worse than going alone is going with people that you wouldn't know or you wouldn't trust. You hear me constantly talk to Aurelis, for example. Aurelis, I'm going to use, use you as an example. I hope you don't mind. But I've been saying to Aurelis, hey, Aurelis, um, you know, before you move to, back to New York City, you should go on ahead and, and do, a, do a, a, um, a ghost outing with us sometime. And I totally get Aurelis going, oh, sure, sounds great. But, you know, we've never met. She doesn't know me from a bar of soap. She only knows me from our interactions here on Twitch as well as on YouTube. But that's why I say something like, well, Aurelis, how about we did this? Because you're in the Maryland area. You know, I'm in the Northern Virginia area. Why don't we go to a place like Linville Manor? Why? Because I know Linville Manor. Linville Manor is listed on Airbnb. It isn't a, you know, old, dejected, rundown, you know, place. Plus, there's not just making sure that I'm above board. You got Wynn Brewer, who is definitely above board. And <laughs> I knew I knew Marvin's going to chime in. <laughs> that I will tell you real quick, just as a quick side note, being able to take Marv, being able to take Marv to to Linville was a was just a bonus. That was so freaking exciting for me because I knew that if the candy factory disappointed, Linville would not, because there truly is something at Linville, and it just cannot be explained. And um, can you take me? Well, come on, one at a time, one at a time. But like with Aurelis, my thing is that I want to make sure that everything's above board. Plus, it is a place that I know is safe. That it's a, you know, you hear me joke about taking, not really joke, but actually talk about taking Doug to Doug Doug to the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Now, um, somebody actually brought this up, and again, this is related. This is related to here. Um, Somebody mentioned that I should take Doug Doug and other friends of his who are all part of this pack. That they all get together and do wild and crazy stuff. And I should just let the chaos happen. I'm like, nope. Nope, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And here's why. I will take Doug Doug and I will take Doug Doug. But then I'm but before we did anything, I would sit down and go, here's the deal about that. Um, exactly. Exactly. You like, like Parks and, and Point Crow. I would not want to get a whole group of people together because I'd want to make sure first that if we went somewhere with a group like that, uh, Iswu, I would take them to Linville instead because then I could say to Win, hey, Win, we've got this group coming in. I don't know what they're expecting, but I think they're going to make this into shtick, uh, you know, into, into, into some YouTube shtick. And that's not what we do. And I explained that in the comment. I said, that is not what I'm doing. I want to give people the experience of the paranormal. I do not want to go and do shtick, okay? And according to Wynn, he's already dealt with that. He had a bunch of YouTubers come in. They were all going to get 
get crazy, do some stuff. And then within about 30 minutes, they were like, holy shit, this is legit. And it's like, yeah, yeah, man, it's legit. And the other reason I didn't want to do something like that, particularly at Trans Allegheny, is because one, Trans Allegheny is a big place. And if you're farting around, you might hurt yourself. Second, I want to make sure that we stay above board and respectful of the place. So that's the um, that's the other thing. That's the other thing that I would want to get across to, to Doug Doug. And going back to what I would be saying with Arellis is I would want to take you to somewhere safe. But when you're saying, hey, we're going to win this stunt by doing this and this, and I've never ghost hunted with you before, let's go to this abandoned church. Well, that takes us back to two weeks ago when I did the breakdown, which is actually coming soon to YouTube, where, I, where it was... Um, it was issue 13 of the Grim Gazette where it was uh, paranormal investigators behaving badly. And <clears throat> while trespassing and, um, and private property laws are different from country to country to country to country, uh, what Beardo got up to could have gotten him at the very least in trouble, at the worst, injured, like, like fatally injured. One of those guys wanted to take wanted to take out they wanted he wanted to take him out completely with with a baseball bat. It was it was a little it was a little insane. And what's happening here is you've got somebody that wants to make it big on YouTube or make it big on TikTok, and they're just teaming up with someone that they may or may not know. And you you when you start getting into this and you want to find out more about um, about the paranormal, going on your own is not necessarily is not necessarily the, the, the best way to go. But also hooking up someone that you don't know, <clears throat> that's also a danger. I mean, I know Phil really wanted to do a paranormal experience. And so what did he do? He called me. Because he thought that, he thought, you know, maybe he'll be into it. You know, he plays Fasmo, And you really do need to take a lot of things into consideration. And when I see people doing stuff like this where they start doing some kind of TikTok stunt or it's a game sh it's a virtual it's a, not a virtual reality but a reality based game show and i mean to me it comes back to respect and it comes back to not just the respect of the property but the respect for the people that had been there and you really have to be careful and in the words of jason hawes it's not the dead you got to worry about it's the living it's the living. The living are, are far scarier than any spirit you'll come into contact with. And here we go. Here we go. During spirit triggers, we established contact with a malevolent entity okay. and several malevolent child spirits. Entity. I've got a plan for capturing these very different... All right. I want to I make this pledge to everyone in my chat right now. If you ever see me wearing a vest like that. I want you to come to TwitchCon because I'm usually pretty good at going to TwitchCon. I want you to go to a TwitchCon, walk up to me, and kick me in the nuts as hard as possible. If you see me wearing this, because I swear to God, this is a terrible look for ghost hunters everywhere. Is that a deal? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, I'm glad everybody's on board here. <laughs> I know where you live. I'll come to your door. <laughs> he does know where I live. That's the scary part. This is this is why I'm not allowed to break any of the rules of destiny like I was talking about earlier. If I must, there you go. Okay, so we, we have a pact. If you seem... Now, remember, this is not one of those pacts where you can say, hey, you told me I could kick you in the mommy-daddy box. Uh-uh. Only if you see me wearing a vest like this. Because this multi-tool vest, no, no, I'm not doing that. Now, those gloves that uh, Katrina Weidman wears that have, that have lights in the thumb and the finger, yeah, you bet I wear the shit out of those. But a vest like this, this is like dork central, okay? Um, ah, the god helmet! Oh, I remember the god helmet. You mean the, you mean the dude that went through the toy clearance bin at Target Saw the Thanos helmet and said, I'm going to make that into a God helmet. Yeah, don't even get me started on the God helmet. Woo! It, it, what it, it, I don't know what it is. It's a mess is what it is. But let's, 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 just, let's just watch this. There we go. Energy is on camera. I'm going to turn on the laser grid. 
just in case any shadows pass by the back wall or the floor area. All right, this is Brian the robot. Brian is gonna work on a gesture recognition only, so something would have to kind of physically interact with it in order for him to move around. Shall we then, in here, mm -hmm. should we kick off with some EVPs? Yeah, good now idea. I think so. Why right. don't we try and connect with maybe this gentleman first of all? Stanley, was it? Yes. I mean, that, that vest is distracting as hell. I'm sorry, that vest is distracting as hell. Going back though, I think I think one of the reasons why Pip picked this out for me to talk about was the robot. Okay, so basically they have a motion detecting robot, which means that if 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 anything passes in front of it, or passes near it, it should it should you know roll roll off or roll away. I would say that the, this is the equivalent of working with cat balls, and I know that many of you have seen me use cat balls in the past. Cat balls, I argue, are the most affordable ghost detection device that you can get because they're one, they're they're super cheap, you know, five bucks and you get like a bag of five or or however many. And also with the slightest movement, when they go off, all these LEDs inside go off. So you you really have to work hard to miss the cat ball going off. Okay. And I'm I'm looking at this robot going, okay, I guess this is like a variation on that theme. It's a motion detecting toy. And if the motion go if the motion sets it off, then it starts moving. So, okay, I can see what they're doing there. Um I don't know how much a, a motion sensitive robot goes for. I know that you know uh, a few years ago Pip got me the the BB8 that you could just, you know, remote control let roam around the house kind of thing, but that wasn't that was not triggered by motion it was basically supposed to um you know detect different corners and different things and it was supposed to be able to just roam around the house until you ran out of its batteries but that's a different and and i know that i know that it was also licensed star wars merchandise so it's going to be a lot more expensive than this thing but how good is this robot i don't know how sensitive is the robot's motion sensors i don't know but let's take a look at this Guys, Brian's not there anymore. What do you mean? He's moving. He's moving. Go. Oh my God. I swear to God, <laughs> the, the, the cameras that are out of focus, the amount of cameras that are out of focus during an investigation, d during professional investigations like this, drive me bananas. Drive me absolutely bananas. This one website says four thousand dollars. Okay, okay. So, okay, let's get back to it. God. He's all the way over there. Well, Just where did here. he start? Did you put in him the in the middle, middle? center of the floor? Okay. Now, what I would have done to confirm that is I would have put like a small little piece of duct tape underneath of where we would put the put the uh, put the robot so that <clears throat> it could creep on its own. It looks like a rebranded Wowee MP Arcade interactive self-balancing robot. Okay. If we look at IMU-based mocap suits ranging from $500 to $10,000 and camera-based systems starting around $2,000 on the lowest and usually upwards $15,000. So about 36 pounds for, uh, for, for this Wowee MIP Arcade robot. Okay. <clears throat> so we're not necessarily talking about about like like uh, really super sensitive motion. It would have to be really pronounced motion for it to set off. Okay. Something well, must be beckoning him around. Yeah, it's, it, I think they are. Let's do a quick EVP. Let's see if he'll speak to us. Ready? Polly, is that you? What the hell was that? What's that? That oh, shadow in the middle. That shadow in the middle, just on the other yeah. side of Brian there. It went black. Yeah, it did. Something came in and out. They, that's going off. Yeah. Then. That's the proximity sensor. Yeah. Right, you stay here. I'll check that out. I actually saw that when... when okay. I, I, I don't know a lot about Help My House is Haunted, but these guys are all over the park. I mean, they're, they're talking about stuff, but I don't see any... They got, they got at least three cameras in here, and it doesn't look like anybody's capturing anything. Um, so, okay. <clears throat> Great. 
with my just naked eye then. I, I saw All right, so let's let see. Me let me just go on Holly, ahead. Can me... you hear me? During spirit triggers, Jilly mentioned a spirit called Stan who slapped her. I'm going to see if we can get a definitive identification. Stan, are you in here? Okay, so we're reaching out to Stan now. We're, we're moving on from the shadow figure that apparently nobody did a replay on or anybody caught on any of the other cameras, but we're jumping to Stan. We, we had two people say they saw a shadow and nobody's catch, nobody's checking their cameras because we got to talk to Stan like right freaking now. Do we want to talk about the shadow figures? No, we got we to gotta focus on Stan. <laughs> Any rest of Demon, stop it. Stop demon. Talking to it. No, I just want to talk to the demons. <laughs> oh, my two knuckleheads. Oh god. Okay. Let's uh, let's get back to Dan. Let's, let's get let's get back to this. I mean, uh, stay on target. I'm trying. Stay on target. I'm really trying here. I'm really trying here. Sing again to us, please. Oh my god. Did you see that? Okay. There is a spirit in the room. I'm assuming that is a motion tracker of some description. And um yeah, I've heard some I've heard mixed I've heard mixed things about help my house is haunted. I've heard I have heard uh <laughs> I understood that reference there, Marv. <laughs> I understood that. My dad watches these guys in Zach Baggins sometimes. Okay. Okay, Aquarius. I I I I think. Okay, so the mustache guy is sort of like a, a UK Zach Baggins. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Is that is is that is that what I'm hearing here? I also bet two pennies. They're not even using night filters. This is some uh, gray filtering to make it look spooky. Possibly, possibly. The fact that when you say you caught a shadow figure or you see a shadow figure, and you've got two cameras, two cameras. We haven't gotten to the deep dive yet, everybody. But you got two cameras, and you're telling me nobody caught it? Really? Okay. Can you please touch the photograph of this village hall? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. If your name is Stan, That's neat. Can you please touch That's neat. the photograph <clears throat> on the wall? Make that light trigger again. It's not Stan. If you're male... I do not recognize that device at all. I've never seen anything like that. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Can you okay. make the lights <clears throat> flash? If you're a male in it, a male spirit, it's not Stan. Okay. I'm gonna go through the alphabet and <sighs> we're going through the alphabet. We're going through the alphabet. We're going through the alphabet. Okay. You make the light flash when I hit the <laughs> alphabet first letter spaghetti. Oh. of your first name. Man, okay. A. Jeez. B. Oh, and he's taking his and he's taking C. his time with it. Okay. Cool oh, beans, bro. Cool beans, bro. Meanwhile, meanwhile in the other room. So it's funny. I don't know if you can see it, chat, in the top corner, but uh, they just had a card pop up here and said, Sharon Osborne passes out during investigation. I know that investigation. It was actually a very, very good investigation uh, from uh, from Jack Osborne. Uh, but yeah, it's a shame they're not wearing a GoPro or something to give a view of what they are seeing. And it's a cheap REM pod made from a, uh, um, a, a Kappa Giv door sensor. Yeah. 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 Polly, are you with me? I'm. I'm. Polly, move back. Oh, whoa! Why is he doing that? L. M. Meanwhile, M. at the Hall of Justice. I can just see it. See, that's the thing. They've got a cameraman on that guy. They've got a camera here. They've got a camera on the three of them, and they said they saw a. They they caught a shadow figure. Now, if someone says we think we caught a shadow figure. I would say then we're stopping and reviewing footage right effing now. 
because we've got and, and and you're right if they are using just a they're not using proper if they're not using a proper um uh ir filter and they're or ir emitter and they're just using gr a gray filter to make it look spooky gay animal that's a real waste of production because you've got this guy here filming them you've got this camera here they should have caught that shadow figure supposedly i still haven't seen it okay Okay, I'm getting wound up. I'm getting wound up here. So let's, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to get through this, everybody. I'm trying oh, desperately uh, to get through this. It's almost like <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was brilliant. Thank you, second hand. Okay. <laughs> she's aware we're here, and then other yeah. times she's not. <laughs> you, be. Okay, I think they are using actual IR emitters because of the effect on his eyes. I think that's what, what's going on here. <clears throat> w. Ho. My. God. Is your name William? Fitz William. Okay, admittedly that is compelling. Admittedly that is compelling. I don't know. I have no clue what that device is, so... That's why I'm not like 100% going, oh, this is, this is good. This is good. I'm just like, it'd be great if I knew what this device was. Um, it's will I am. <laughs> it's will I am. <laughs> it's will I am. This is William. I'm speaking to a spirit. A See, again, camera here. They, they got plenty of cameras. They should have caught that freaking uh, shadow figure. But no, we need to do an EVP session with our homemade whatever that is. Don't drop the don't drop the S F words and then just move on. Man, when I caught the shadow figure at Crescent, I stopped everything and said, Phil, we need to look at that footage now. We need and he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, pack up faster, pack up faster. Because I wanted to know if we caught it. And when we did catch it, we could barely see it. But I was I was we were we were like, no, there's something there. That's that's a story for another time. Okay. Man called William. Were you a miner, an iron miner? Did you mine the iron ore from the pit? Thank you. That is a definitive response. We are getting- I really hate it when people say that. That's a definitive response. Not always, not always. If that is a, cause here's the other thing too. Uh, and I'm trying to remember who was that. Oh, it was King, it was King who said that. Um, uh, the thing to know about REM pods and REM pod knockoffs, you have to be very careful, and, and not even REM pod knockoffs. I mean, let me rephrase that. REM pod and REM pod-like devices. You need to make sure no one is on walkie-talkies and no one is on any kind of two-way system because that can trigger those things. Um, when you hear people debunk them because they are theremins, yes, yes, they are theremins. Which is why, you know, they, they react the way they do. But if you're not anywhere near a theremin, it makes no noise, to my knowledge. And these are the same things with REM pods. If you leave a REM pod alone and there's nothing around it, it's not just going to go off. Something has to break that EMF field that it's creating. But if you've got a walkie-talkie, that will send out a signal strong enough. It will send out a radio signal strong enough to interfere with the EMF field. So, yeah. Uh, what room are we in right now? Um, what home? Are, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the home or the room is. But intelligent responses. And this is direct but, communication method. This is absolutely incredible. I need to tell the guys what I've just experienced. Are we going to forget that they mentioned the words shadow figure just like a few moments ago? Guys, I have just had the most fantastic direct communication with a spirit who told me his name was William. Well done. <sighs> and why is Brian going mental? Well, Brian ran into my feet, but he went <laughs> rammed into it. Do you think this is Polly? Polly's definitely moving him, yeah. Let's go and speak to William. So you just, you just came up with William, or did you feel that? It was the first name that came to my head. Let's see if that happens again, all right? I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna grab the instant camera while we do this. Jane? This is this this is this is driving me nuts. 
Uh, making oh, you're making your own REM pod. Actually, King um, Phil has made his own REM pods as well. Uh, the amount of filtering I had to do with the signal, so it doesn't pick up background and interference, is pretty intense. It's also the same tech that makes the touch screen in your smartphones work. Yeah, yeah. There's a celebrity version of this show. Fantastic, fan freaking tastic. Apparently, okay. Try and capture the spirit using an instamatic camera whilst I take burst photographs with a full spectrum camera. William, please touch the photograph. Now, Phil and I have had this debate before, and I'm I'm kind of of a, of a mindset about instamatic cameras, like Polaroid cameras and things like that. When people talk about, oh, look, there's an orb here. We picked up something here. The thing you got to know about the instamatic cameras, and this is the photographer guy in me coming out. And when I say a photographer in me, I mean as in I have worked in... I have worked in the uh, in the labs, you know, like I I I have come home um, or I should say I've come back to my dorm room and really like from a deep sleep woken my my housemates or my sorry, my um my uh, roommates, not because I slammed the door coming in, but because they could smell the chemicals that had gotten into my into my um, my clothes. You can you can have bubbles in um, you know when developing the film and things like that, and it will actually sh show up in the picture. So yeah, I am a jack of all trades. It's it's really kind of true. It's kind of true, Arellis. Uh I, I was a, a, and and the thing is though those bubbles because I remember I had that happen. I had that happen to me. Uh, I saw this stuff and I was like, what's what's all this? And the guy who was training me in the way like actually gave me training. He was saying, oh. That happened because you didn't shake the, uh, the 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 fluid enough. You've really got to shake it because it, the more you shake it, the fewer bubbles you're gonna have. You got to make sure that the solution, if you if you don't if you don't do it right, some stuff will bubble up. Okay, all those chemicals that I'm that I'm working with by hand, they are in the film that you've got for an instamatic camera, which means they're not gonna be perfectly blended all the time, which is why sometimes Polaroid camera. Polaroid camera pictures that you'll take will either turn out really, really great or they'll look like crap. So you've got to you've got to take Instamatic camera, um, you know, ghost ghost hunting devices with a grain of salt. Seriously, with a grain of salt. All right, <clears throat> um, this is the closest I could find someone trying to list all of the equipment they're using in the show. Not sure how true it is. Okay, I'll have to look at that. I'll have to look at that later. Oh. All right. <clears throat> You know what to do. You were doing it for me. Ian, you ask. William, can you hear me? Can you let me know you're here? Now, digital photography, that's a different story altogether. That's a different story altogether, to my knowledge. Again, I say to my knowledge because... Um, you know, with digital photography, what you're what you're relying on is that all of the the memory the memory board stuff is working, all the optics that are built into your camera are working. Because if one of those things goes off, and I've had this happen before with digital cameras, when all those things go off, you have a mess of a photograph. I just know that digital photography is a bit more reliable than than Polaroid Instamatic stuff. All right. All right. What happened? There you go. Can you let me know you're here? Oh. Okay, so something hit the camera. All right, that's that's intriguing. Oh, Where's that coming from? It sounds like from below. If, was that you, William? Sensing this spirit is doing its best to reconnect. Right. Try the Echo Box ITC application. When They're using an app. Okay. 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 Okay, we're good. We're good. IR cameras can be just as bad. To be fair, dust shows up like a disco ball on it. Oh yeah. Um, if you if you if you must know. Um, <clears throat> all right. Good night, Marv. Thanks for thanks for hanging out, buddy. Thanks for hanging out. Love you. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story, King. Uh, when we were at the Crescent uh, SCI facility, that was when we at at uh, OSI. That's when we decided. Yeah, we're not buying into orbs anymore. Because there were orbs of plenty everywhere in our IR camera, and it was because the place was just just dusty as f, you know. So so there's that. There's that. Yep.
On a daily basis, I consume enough drugs to sedate Manhattan, Long Island, and Queens. What? Month. What the hell is that? <laughs> you know, you got a point, and the, the vest ain't helping. The vest ain't helping. Just saying. Brilliant. I also want to make sure this is clear, too. I know I've got, like, a uh, an address where you can send me stuff and things like that. I don't care if you guys send me that vest as a gift. If you sent me that as a gift, I will tell you right now, I will I will wear it once on stream just to say, okay, thank you whoever got me this. I'm never wearing this again, all right? Just throwing that out there. Do not buy me one of these vests. I will, Aurelis, shame on you, Aurelis. Shame on you on you shame on you shame on your house shame on your family okay where was i oh i was right here there we go oh this is the app this is okay so this is the vox app okay here we go bonnie you back off you back off now all right let's <laughs> i'm beginning to understand now why doug doug kept some of you in the basement i'm starting to understand that and for those of you who have nothing to do with Doug Doug but are contributing this behavior, all I have to say is to you. All right. Sensing this spirit is doing its best to reconnect. We try to get Why do I get the impression now that my chat is now shopping for these vests? Why do I get the impression that that right now my chat is shopping for these vests? Jackie, thank you very much for that uh, follow. I really do. Don't put me in another basement. <laughs> okay. 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 I know. I know. Before anybody says it. Stay on target. I'm working on it. Stay on target. I'm getting there. Okay. The Echo Box ITC application. William, do people see you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Holy I haven't finished shit. my question. Well done. Well done. Oh, uh -oh. Whoa, flash. Yeah. Brilliant. Keep it going. William, did you use the bathhouse here? Oh, yeah. that's a yes. He's using different ways, isn't he? To prove William is the malevolent spirit causing all the problems, we need to provoke a reaction. No, you don't. No, you don't. But I guess this is how you do things. So you do you, boo. But okay. 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 Someone is going to have to make him an OSI brand. King, I swear to God on my, I, wow. Hallelujah. Holy shit. Where's the Tylenol? Okay, can we get through this, please? <laughs> Are you sorry for what you did? <clears throat> you. Mm. Well. That's not very I mean, I can't blame the spirit. Can you really blame the spirit? I want to tell this guy to f off with the vest, you know, but I mean, I, I, if I were spared, I'd be like, hey, bro, nice fucking vest. But I mean, that's just me. That's just me. <laughs> I mean, um, okay. On that note, everyone, I think I need to take a break because, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, th th this is, uh, I don't like the fact that they're going to start provoking. I, I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, what I have coming up next, though, is um, this is a tough one. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will begin with, uh, with part two of the Grim Gazette. Um, and I, I got to say, before we, uh, before we really jump into it, this one, it's, it's um, I, I guess for me... My thoughts about it are my thoughts about it are that yes, um, everyone gets their information from different sources, but but I really I really do feel like I really do feel like the, that the party involved or the parties involved should have dug a little deeper. They should have dug a little a little bit deeper. That's just my that's just my two cents. Right now, we're just going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will get into the deep dive. And um, yeah, thank you for being here. You are watching the live filming of the Grim Gazette, issue 15. 
We have just finished up with weird news and paranormal clips. And when we get back, we're going to be doing our paranormal deep dive. 